This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is Thiago Mata, former player at Barcelona, Inter Milan and PSG, and the current head coach of Bologna in Serie A. And for the past two years, Mata has been quietly developing a footballing unicorn. By mixing elements of totally different philosophies, he's created a type of football that you've probably never seen, one that some believe is the next big tactical evolution. So today I'm going to explore this Bologna team and what makes Thiago Mata one of the most fascinating coaches around. In a pre-game press conference, Mata was asked how his team would adapt to Atalanta's man-to-man -man press, and he replied, they are very strong and know how to not let you play. This is why the relational phase will be very important, that is, the maximum participation of all my players on the field. And it turns out that answer gives us a clue as to what makes Bologna so unique. I'm going to start though with their basic shape, just to help you visualise what's going on. In most games in possession, Bologna play with a back four, a single pivot, two advanced midfielders, typically one deeper and one more advanced, then two wingers and a centre forward. So you could categorise this as a 4-3-3, but to me the numbers are of very little importance. And the reason for that, the major theme that's going to run all the way through this team, is Bologna's extreme level of movement. Now, when we talk about movement in high possession teams, we're used to seeing it within the context of position. So while players must move to create passing angles, to receive in space, they're not moving so much that the overall structure is disrupted. De Bruyne sticks to his position here because he knows when the ball comes across, he needs to be there to attack the space. So your position takes priority and you move with that in mind. The people believe, oh, how they move? No, no, but the move is the ball. Everybody has to be in the position. When you move much, it's not good. This is where the movement in Thiago Motta's Bologna is completely different, because here movement is not just happening within the context of a player's position. On the contrary, when Motta says he wants maximum participation from his players, he's giving them license to move far outside the confines of their position, to each affect the game in the way they think is best. And in practice, that leads to players with a far greater range of movement for the sake of progressing the ball. But what makes Bologna even more fascinating is the level of that movement seems to change depending on the phase of the game. So starting at the goalkeeper, we can see here a positional structure. Typically it's a 4-2 shape with the goalkeeper becoming a second centre-back and one of the actual centre-backs stepping into midfield. So here, while you do still see a lot of movement from Bologna, with different players drifting forward at different times, it is happening within the context of this structure. As one player steps up, another rotates back. But what's great is that every player can take responsibility to do this, so it never becomes predictable. Players pass and move forward, drag players away, create passing lanes, confuse forwards. And that makes Bologna very good at keeping the ball, especially in the first third of the pitch, where they have the most touches in all of Serie A. But keeping the ball is one thing, progressing it up the pitch is another, and this is where Bologna's movement starts to become more extreme, and outside the confines of position. And I'm going to give you two examples that show just how unorthodox Bologna can be. So you've got a business and you want to grow it and take over the world, and that's great. But first, you're going to need a website. And then you're going to need product pages and probably email campaigns and analytics. And that's where Squarespace comes in, the sponsor of today's video. Whatever your industry and whatever you're selling, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website that stands out. Starting from a template, it's easy to customize it exactly how you want. Here's mine, and I think it looks pretty clean if you ask me. But once that's done, you've got the option to do all those other things. Email campaigns, website analytics, you can even create memberships and courses all on the same platform. So if you're starting out and you want a website builder that's easy to use but still scalable, you can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash the purest football for 10% off your first website or domain. Good luck. Example one is against Roma, where Berkema, the centre-back, actually vacates the central position and drifts right, creating space for Freuler, the pivot. And at the same time, Ferguson, the attacking midfielder, also drifts to the right, completely breaking down Bologna's initial shape, but creating a load of space for Freuler to drive into. For Roma, this is a problem. Does this midfielder go with Ferguson or stay inside? The winger and Doy then does something very smart and drifts inside, giving the fullback the same problem. Does he go or does he stay? And in the end, Ferguson ends up completely free and Bologna find him to eventually score. 
Example 2 is actually earlier in the same game, and this time Froiler and Ferguson have come right up to the ball, dragging their markers forward. And of all these players, it's actually the pivot, Remo Froiler, who leaves his position to exploit that space, and again, it actually results in a goal. Now, while these two examples look very different, they are founded on the same principles. One player moves to create a passing option, and another recognizes that and takes the responsibility to exploit the space. And this shared understanding of movement is one of the great triumphs of Thiago Motta's Bologna, because it allows each player to be spontaneous and intuitive when looking for the ball, but still ensures the team moves in sync. And in a world of man-to-man -man pressing, the sheer unpredictability and range of movement can be devastating. In addition to these principles, players are also given specific roles to help them navigate the chaos of the game. For example, one of the key relationships at Bologna is between centre forward Joshua Xerxi and attacking midfielder Lewis Ferguson. Ferguson explained that a major part of his role was to move in tandem with Xerxi, recognising if he's dropping deep, to give an option in behind, or vice versa. And the two have developed a great understanding based on their respective skill sets. Xerxi having excellent awareness with his back to goal, and Ferguson understanding when and how to occupy the spaces. So it's this idea of roles and relationships between them that gives the players a framework as they start to break away from their positions. And just to visualise the difference between position-based and role-based movement, here you can see the season heat maps of Julian Alvarez of Manchester City and Lewis Ferguson of Bologna, two players who start in a similar area of the pitch but have very different spheres of influence. However, not all is perfect at Bologna, because although they are very good on the ball, data suggests that they should be even more effective. Because while they average 57% possession, they don't consistently turn that into chances. In fact, they're down in ninth for touches in the final third of the pitch, they're also 13th for passes into the penalty area, and only 16% of their long possessions end with a touch in the box, which is the lowest of the top six. And when we start to dig a bit deeper, we do see some potential issues with Thiago Motta's approach. So far we've seen how Bologna have a lot of positional freedom and use movement to create space, but sometimes those things can be in conflict with one another. For example, if too many players come to one side of the pitch, you can congest that area too much and deny your own ability to create space through movement. When this happens, players tend to just cycle the ball out and start again, which contributes to some of Bologna's unthreatening possessions. But there's one player that's different, and that is Joshua Xerxi. Now, Xerxi is technically excellent. He's incredible receiving under pressure with his back to goal. His awareness of his teammates means he's often the only central link between defense and attack. But what makes him really stand out is he's able to operate in limited space, which gives Bologna a completely different dimension. Because you're not always going to create big pockets of space by dragging players around, someone like Xerxi, who combines so intuitively, whose nature is to pass and move, gives you an alternative route to progress, using relationships with the ball, not just movement off it. And Xerxi, for me, represents the potential of this Thiago Motta system. Because he gives you that positional freedom, he accommodates these highly technical, highly intuitive players. I mean, you could absolutely put a pure 10 in this system, which to be fair, Xerxi already resembles. And with more players like him, you could have the option to play through these areas with combinations rather than cycling the ball out. A team that knows how to create space, but doesn't always have to. We see glimpses of it already, and I think this would be taken to another level with even better players. So as interesting as Bologna are now, what's exciting for me is how this system scales up, and I would love to see Thiago Motta coach a top team in the future. With all that said, some of you may be wondering how this free-flowing approach is balanced defensively. And perhaps surprisingly, Bologna's possession game is actually really well suited to defensive transitions, that is, how they respond when they lose the ball. As we've seen, Bologna often end up with a lot of players around the ball. Froiler and Ferguson in particular tend to drift to the ball side when it goes wide, and playing through these areas is usually less risky from a defensive perspective than playing through the middle, because it's much easier to compress the space if you lose it. But even as they get further up the pitch, proximity to the ball is one of Bologna's best defensive tools. Like every team, they have a structured rest defense in the final third. You can see it here, it's a sort of 1-3-1 one, one shape with Berkma as a sweeper. But the lack of positional structure of the attackers is actually quite useful, because when the midfielders drop to get on the ball, there's no obligation for someone else to rotate into that zone. They do sometimes, but not always. 
which creates moments where you've got a lot of players around and behind the ball, even in the attacking third, leading to a very effective counter press if you don't score. This might also explain some of the data we looked at earlier. Bologna don't get the ball into the box that much because weirdly, they don't actually prioritize getting bodies in there. Ferguson explained that once we're in the opposition's half, we're patient, but when there's a switch or a pass that breaks a line, everybody switches on. The full 11 has to change rhythm, and if everyone does that, that's when we can create chances. So there's not a requirement to occupy certain spaces, it's triggered by moments in the game when the team senses an opportunity, and everyone switches on and attacks the box. But until that point, the team remains patient, and actually very defensively balanced. Thiago Mata has said that the vast majority of his training focuses on his team with the ball, and when you watch Bologna play, that's really no surprise. The truth is though, I could make an entire video on Bologna's out of possession because it's arguably been even more important to their current league performance. So if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. But if you can't wait for that, you can check out my bonus podcast on Thiago Mata by heading over to Patreon. I give my thoughts on the potential pros and cons of this approach at a top team, where you often have to face different challenges, things like low blocks for example. So check out the Patreon link on screen to listen to that. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.